the Lord comes and a new order of existence comes. We, we can rejoice in the midst of, in the midst of uh, terrible trauma and tragedy, in the midst of gross wickedness, we can, like the people in New Testament times, anticipate a time when things will be different. Okay? And the hope and assurance that comes from knowing that one day things will change, the Lord will step into history and change things. Okay? That is what sometimes, is sometimes called uh, apocalyptic literature. Apocalyptic literature is literature that has certain basic features, facets. There are all kinds of apocalyptic literature. Some of them have more of these, some of them have fewer. Uh, following features. Often there are astral phenomena, things happening in the heavens. Often there are strange beasts that are seen. Often there are lots of numbers, threes and sevens and twelves. And also, there is this, this constant message of, hold on, hold on. It's not going to be forever. The Lord's coming. Now, examples of apocalyptic literature would be, um, they're found in the book of Ezekiel. They're found in, to some extent, in Joel, in Daniel, some in Isaiah. But in the New Testament, Matthew 24, Probably 1 Nephi 14. But the granddaddy of them all, of course, is what? The book of Revelation. It contains all of those. All of those elements. Okay? Let me read us a passage from the Doctrine and Covenants. From section 88. And immediately there shall, in verse 93, immediately there shall appear a great sign in heaven, and all people shall see it together. This is really interesting. The sign of the Son of Man, it's called. The prophet Joseph, in giving a sermon once, made reference to this. He said, then will appear the great sign in heaven, and people will say, what is it? It is a comet. It is a planet. And that's all he says world is that? A tradition developed early in, among the Latter-day Saints that Joseph Smith had taught that the sign of the Son of Man is the return of the city of Enoch to earth. Okay. When they come back and bring everything with them. Another angel shall sound his trump saying, the great church, the mother of abominations that made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, that persecuteth the saints of God, that shed their blood, she who sitteth upon many waters. And upon the islands of the sea, behold, she is the tares of the earth. She is bound in bundles. Her bands are made strong, no man can loose them, therefore she is ready to be burned. And there shall be silence in heaven for the space of half an hour. I don't think anyone's ever assumed, that's looked at this carefully, that, we're, that that's just a 30 minute time period. If it were a... Um, it's probably talking about according to the Lord's time. So it could be a period of years. The 38th section of the Doctrine and Covenants makes reference to wickedness. And it says, which causes the heavens to be silent. So this is again a reminder that we'll be in a time where for many, many people there, there will be no revelation because they're not worthy of it. And immediately after shall a curtain of heaven be unfolded as a scroll is unfolded after it is rolled up. And the face of the Lord shall be revealed. And the saints that are upon the earth who are alive shall be quickened, made alive, and are caught up to meet him. And they who have slept in their graves shall come forth. For the grave shall be opened, and they also shall be caught up to meet him in the midst of the pillar of heaven. They are Christ, the first fruits, they who shall descend with him first. And they who are on the earth and in the graves 
who are first caught up to meet him, and all this by the voice of the sounding of the trump of the angel of God. And so, just from that passage alone, you get this concept. When the Lord comes, he will not come alone. He will come with a multitude of people who were faithful, like unto celestial, in years gone by. And we would say the first resurrection, which began in the days of Christ's resurrection, the first resurrection will resume when Christ returns. And those who are the faithful will come with him as resurrected, glorified beings. Okay? 